robots, artificial intelligence, science fiction or real? Well, Timing. So those are two different things, right? Artificial intelligence in the sense of computers that can think or robots as in they have the capacity to do things. Well, you, right? you're the expert. Yeah, I mean, uh, both, both of them are real. Both of them are happening. Artificial intelligence in the, in the sense of how do I take a bunch of information and, and produce, uh, produce information that is, that is valuable to you as a human, that, that is, exists is accelerating, will be powerful. Um, it exists in little ways in things like Facebook knows what my face looks like and says, oh, hey, tags me in pictures. And so that's not exactly transforming the world. Um, on the other hand, I was just having a conversation with someone about the idea that ultimately, if you do have that kind of facial recognition and a, and a, and a worldwide database of faces, that really does change the nature of policing. It changes the nature of security in ways that are very troubling, but but a gigantic business. And if you look at Palantir, like I don't know what Palantir is doing. I just funded a company, um, the, a company called Second Spectrum. This company takes the video feeds from every NBA game, consumes it, converts those video feeds into bouncing dots. So here's number 31, and he's here and here, and here's the ball and whatever, and then uses artificial intelligence to understand what's happening in the game. And then allows coaches to say, show me every instance in which this thing happens or this thing happens or whatever. Show me every person who is an outlier when it comes to being in position for rebounds, cat, you know, whatever. It's an incredible combination of data, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, machine learning. And we're ready for it. And the, the wave is here. The well, wave is, you're jumping on it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I jumped on that one because I think it can, because I think ultimately, not only will it be transformative for coaches, but it will transform the way that we watch the sport. Because suddenly you can say, I just want to see every instance that is, uh, you know, one standard deviation better than what anybody should reasonably doing, reasonably be doing. And the machine will say, oh, watch these 70 clips. And you'll go, oh my God, that's the greatest thing ever. And it's instantaneous. Marcus, re uh, Revolve Robotics, are we ready for robotics? Is David right that he's slightly ambivalent that, you know, <laughs> robots aren't quite round the corner? Well, I mean, the question is what you're asking it to do. And I mean, we, we designed a robot, it's a telepresence robot, but as most people think of telepresence robots that drive around with wheels, we didn't think actually the technology is ready for wheels yet. So we designed it just to be able to look around. And tablets, you can get great video conferencing on those through 4G or Wi-Fi. You can connect anywhere. And so our, our view is you can now make it simple and affordable to put this anywhere. And now you can go basically teleport, as we've all wanted to do, you know, location to location. And so if you pick a task that it is capable of doing, like thinking about a roaming robot. I talked to so many companies that are like, oh, those are cool. I saw it on you know, Big Bang Theory, and I want to be <laughs> shelled bot too. Um, and they have them, and I go around, there's probably one sitting in here. <laughs> um, but um, they, they're just not getting used because there's closed doors, there's Wi-Fi dead spots, there's stairs, there's all these things that just prevent it from being uh, used. And do you even really need that? Like how often, like here, none of us need to be moving around. We're all sitting in place. So if we wanted someone else here, they're just sitting there. And so the key is, is making it so that you can interact.